Hey, this is Thomas from OKSNotEnough.com, helping you become the best version of yourself and create a more exciting and more fulfilling life. And today, I have quite a special video for you because I will tell you why OK is not enough. But before I do that, very important thing, press that little subscribe button so you don't miss any of my future videos. Over the years, people have been asking me, hey Thomas, why okay is not enough? Have you ever wondered about that? Well, let me ask you this. If you went on holidays and it was just okay, would you travel back there again? Or if you went to a cinema and the movie was just okay, would you go and watch it again? Or if you went to a restaurant and the food was just okay, would you eat there again? And when I say okay, I mean the kind of okay you get from a colleague when you ask them how they're doing. It's just nonchalant and unremarkable. And going back to these three questions, most people would say, of course not. Of course I wouldn't put my time and money and energy to do any of that again. They would put their time and money into doing something at least slightly better. And if you answered no to uh, any of those three questions as well, that you wouldn't do these okay things again, then why would you settle for an okay life? Living an okay life is comfortable and convenient, sure, but it's rarely happy, exciting and fulfilling. At least that's how people describe it to me. But hey, if you are fine with living an okay life and how it makes you feel, then awesome. I couldn't be happier for you. But if you want to live a life that is exciting and fulfilling, that will allow you to have all the things that you really want rather than leftovers from a bargain bin, then you need to accept that okay is not enough. In fact, okay is the worst place to be in in life in terms of growth because it's so easy to get stuck there and most people do get stuck in the okay. Where you want to be in life is the winning zone and where you definitely don't want to be is the rut. Okay, that's the comfort zone. It's the place between when life is amazing and when life sucks where things work out just enough so you think you can let be, but not enough that you can ever stop thinking, ooh, if only. The best place to be in is, of course, the winning zone. Why? Because life is exciting. You see results, you have momentum, you believe in yourself. Your mind sees possibilities and opportunities rather than scarcity and limitations. It's thrilling, it's fulfilling. Life is what you want it to be. I'm sure that you've had even just moments when life felt that way. Do you remember the energy it gave you and how it felt? Wouldn't you want to experience that more often? Now, contrary to what you might think, when it comes to growth and making improvements to your life, the second best place is the rut. Why? Because it's when shit hits the fan in life, when things get so bad that you're no longer asking yourself whether you feel like doing something about it or not, whether you feel like taking action or not. You are not making excuses and procrastinate, you just get on with it. The discomfort or pain, whether physical or emotional, is so intense and so unbearable that you are willing to do almost anything to stop it from happening. And what does rut look like? Well, for example, it's when you lose your job and looking for a new job is no longer a question of whether you feel like it or not. It's when your doctor tells you that if you don't lose weight, you have 95% of a heart attack in the next couple of years. And so then, um, hitting the gym is no longer a question whether you will make time for it or not. The problem is that when people get 
in the rut, they do just enough to avoid the pain or discomfort to get out of the rut, back into the comfort zone, and that's where they relax and that's where they get stuck again. And this is why the OK zone is the most dangerous place to stay in. It's because it's so comfortable and it's so convenient. There isn't any great discomfort or urgency. One can happily survive there and that's the thing. OK zone is about surviving, but surviving is not thriving. People who come to me for coaching often say almost the same thing. They say, hey Thomas, I'm okay. I uh, have a decent job, I make okay money, uh, my relationship is fine, my health is fine, I'm not ill, I'm not dying. Um, yeah, life is okay. And so I ask them, right, so um, why are you here? I'm just not happy. I, I feel like I'm just surviving. I know I'm capable of so much more in life. If only I pushed myself, I know that life could be so much better. I'm afraid that I will keep going like this and one day when it's too late, I will regret that I haven't given it my best when I had the chance. I'm doing okay, but I don't want to settle just for okay. I can't tell you how many times I've heard a story like this where ambitious people, people with so much potential, just get stuck in the OK zone. The OK zone is really a zone of tolerable discomfort. That's when your life or your situation sucks, but it just doesn't suck enough to do something about it. Because doing something about it would mean letting go of comfort and go and do something less comfortable or even uncomfortable. You see, it's a little bit like when you sit on a sofa and you're watching a movie and you need to pee, but it's just not bad enough. It's not critical enough for you to get up and go to the bathroom. So you just wait until it becomes unbearable, until you can't hold it anymore, until it gets critical, until you get in a rut, then you go and you go to the bathroom and you deal with it. And that's how some people live their lives. They just wait until it gets critical, unbearable enough, and then they do something to improve it just a little bit to get back into that tolerable discomfort or into the okay zone. Some people just have standards this low to be the least uncomfortable with minimal effort. And notice that I said least uncomfortable, not to be comfortable. Because some people really have standards this low that they just seek not being too uncomfortable. And so some people accept these standards and they play it safe their whole life. They change the channel on the TV a million times before they decide to change something in their life. Their thumbs will scroll for miles through Instagram, envying others, but they will never think of walking a mile a day just to improve their health. So now you understand why OK is not enough. It's so much more than just a tagline. It's a, it's a philosophy, an attitude towards life. OK is not enough is not about greed and never being satisfied. It's about never being satisfied with anything less than you believe you're capable of. It's about prioritizing fulfillment over comfort, growth over mediocrity, and thriving over surviving. It's about refusing to live with knowing that you could be more, do more, and have more of what life has to offer. If only you really tried, gave it your best and defied your fears. And yes, hey, sometimes even comfort. Okay, it's not enough is much more about being than having. So there you go. This is why I truly believe that okay 
is not enough. And that's uh, my personal philosophy that I lived by for the last several years. And it helped me create incredible results in my life and make unbelievable changes. And that's why I wanted to share this with you. So maybe you can embrace this personal philosophy as well and let it help you raise your standard and get more out of life. Or at least it gave you something to think about. And with that said, as always, thank you for watching. I appreciate your attention. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of my future videos. And I look forward to seeing you on the next one.